Hello everyone, I welcome you all to today's discussion, the basal ganglia connections. It's a very complex topic and I'm going to simplify it very easily for you that you will be able to understand the diagram in front of you like a cakewalk. So let's move forward and see what it holds for us. So there are few nuclei in the basal ganglia as we know and basal ganglia modulates plans the motor function that is initiated by the cortex and it delivers a smooth experience to the human right it's a user friendly thing it delivers a smooth uh, like a phone delivers a smooth application process this basal ganglia is a processor it plans everything you know for a normal movement no, normal motor movement there is no need of basal ganglia but in order to have a fine sharp movement you need basal ganglia just like there is a difference between drawing a monkey and drawing like a monkey like right so here the basal ganglia comprises of few nuclei namely the caudate the putamen the globus pallidus as a whole which is divided into globus pallida externa and globus pallida interna our favorite nucleus thalamus and subthalamic nucleus and substantia nigra okay this substantia nigra is divided into two parts that is pars reticulata and pars compacta what okay so this pars compacta is dopaminergic remember this is very important Pars reticulata is GABAergic and almost all the nuclei are GABAergic except subthalamic nucleus which is glutaminergic that means it is stimulatory and this is the main feedback loop we will discuss why it is main feedback loop and thalamus always stimulates the motor cortex. So these are the few dictums. Almost all the nuclei are GABAergic except subthalamic nucleus which is glutaminergic and stimulatory and pars compacta which is dopaminergic. Peculiarly, this pars compacta and pars reticulata, these both have inhibitory functions. That does not mean not inhibitory functions alone. It also have inhibitory functions, especially dopaminergic. We will discuss it in due course of time. So this pars reticulata and you know GPI that is globus pallidus interna this pars reticulata and globus pallidus interna they are almost structurally similar and they function as single functional unit single functional unit so why are we learning all this in order to understand how the basal ganglia interconnections work and how they yield the final output we need to know few things we need to know two facts very very important facts so this fact one that is 
GPI parse reticulator complex. Okay, we will call the GPR globus pallidus and reticulator interna. Okay, GPI PR complex we will call it GPI PR complex is almost always tonically active. That means it is almost always active. So as we know what is the main neurotransmitter GABA. Okay, remember this and this output what GABA will do inhibit okay this suppress the thalamus which gives output to cortex that means it is suppressing the output to cortex by suppressing the thalamus and the fact number two this globus pallidus externa normally inhibits subthalamic nucleus so subthalamic is a stimulatory nucleus so this is inhibiting the subthalamic nucleus that means it is preventing the subthalamic nucleus from stimulating something which we will discuss as we see when you want to go to a place normally you will have two different roads if you open the google maps and see you will have two different roads one is long and one is short the short one you call as not shortcut you sh the short one you call as direct route and the long one you call as indirect route that means it, they are reaching almost the same point but they are taking different routes likewise our basal ganglia connections have two routes direct and indirect to understand them we will basically write down a skeleton of basal ganglia nuclei and connections which will help us to jot down and represent the both pathways very easily so initially there is cortex this cortex is sending some neurons to striatum some signal to such striatum right so this striatum in the basal ganglia acts as a gateway for the cortex or cortical neurons this striatum is gabargic as we discussed most of the things are gabargic here and then there is GPI SNPR complex that is globus pallidus interna and substantia nigra pars reticulata complex these both are gabargic right and then there is globus pallidus externa which is also gabargic and then there is subthalamic nucleus which is glutaminergic which is glutaminergic simple right so these all pathways finally end up in one point that is our thalamus it is a celebrity or it is the destination for pathways and this thalamus almost always stimulates the motor cortex to do something to do some function execute some function it will stimulate but if here based on the connections and the transmitters 
we can derive few things right whether it is inhibitory or excitatory right this triatom is inhibitory whereas this gpa snpr is also inhibitory what does it inhibit this complex inhibits the thalamus whereas gpe is gabaergic and inhibits the subthalamic nucleus this is the normally and this subthalamic nucleus is very active person you know it's hyperactive and so it always stimulates which one is it stimulating gpi snpr complex so these are the basic connections which you have to remember to know the direct and indirect pathways now let us dive into the direct pathway so a stimulus is coming from the cortex to striatum this ink will use for direct and it is stimulating the striatum as striatum is gabaergic and it is forming a connection with gpi snpr complex it will inhibit because this striatum is stimulated when stimulated the striatum releases gaba which inhibits the gpi snpr complex but normally gpi snpr complex is inhibiting the thalamus to prevent motor cortex function but when this gpa snpr complex gaba is inhibited this complex is inhibited gaba is not secreted that means the thalamus is active right it is promoting you to do some action some over action simple what is it doing in the direct pathway it is increasing the motor activity whereas in the indirect pathway here comes the trick what happens but it's very simple don't uh, fall into this simple pitfalls this cortex is sending the signals again to the striatum because it's the gateway it's the only gateway it is stimulating the striatum but this guy now has taken a long route now this striatum is inhibiting the gp which is secreted gaba that means the gaba is not secreted that means the subthalamic nuclei is not inhibited which means this glutaminergic neurons are stimulating the gpi snpr complex which is secreting gaba to inhibit thalamus very easy right this thalamus now inhibited what it will do reduce the motor cortex function done we are done with the pathways simple right so i will tell you something to remember here very easy you will have you have here one positive stimulus one negative stimulus and one negative stimulus multiply all three direct is duplicating the function that means it is increasing multiply all three right the result is positive right whereas in indirect see there is one positive one negative another negative and another negative total is one positive and total is negative what it is doing decreasing the function right so simple multiply all those and it is decreasing the function that means indirect is literally inhibiting indirect inhibiting the motor cortex not thalamus or even thalamus you can say okay and direct is duplicating that means it's making the function double that means stimulating simple right so now you will ask sir what about substantia nigra you have talked about ars reticulata what about ars compacta ars compacta right we will have another color here some some color yeah orange let us keep it orange ars compacta this is dopaminergic 
what it is doing so this dopaminergic compactor or compactor is secreting dopamine right just understand that this is dopamine it's my prescription handwriting so this dopamine is capable of stimulating d1 receptors and d2 receptors here comes a very important point d1 receptors are present in direct pathway and d2 are present in indirect pathway what does these d1 receptors do they depolarize cells in the direct pathway which will lead to increased activity of direct pathway and which results in increased motor activity right and d2 what is it doing here this d2 is present in indirect pathway right this d2 receptor stimulation by dopamine is hyperpolarizing hyperpolarizing the indirect pathway that means it is decreasing the indirect pathway effect that it that means it is decreasing the decrease of motor activity right as we have seen above this indirect pathway is inhibiting so if you inhibit the indirect pathway what is happening the motor activity will automatically increase decreased indirect pathway automatically the motor activity will increase that means the stimulation by dopamine d1 and d2 receptors will finally increase motor activity simple so simple very clear right now let us make it more clear and clinically relevant what is the power point of learning all this if you are not applying anything anywhere right so we will discuss what is happening in the parkinsons versus huntingtons these both are very notorious diseases right what is the defect in parkinsons decreased dopamine dopaminergic neurons and what is the defect in huntingtons this is loss of this is very interesting if you learn this now you will remember the pathway forever loss of striatal neurons in indirect pathway sir you will ask me how does it know that it is indirect pathway so this huntingtons is a result of CAG trinucleotide repeats this forms a protein called huntingtin so funny right huntingtin protein this accumulates in the indirect pathway this protein accumulates in the indirect pathway and it doesn't function so what happens here decreased dopamine that means decreased dopamine one stimulation and no dopamine two effect and finally this dopamine d1 decreased d1 stimulation will affect direct pathway what it will do in absence of dopamine decreased direct pathway activity and also relative increase in indirect pathway 
because D2 is inhibiting the indirect whereas D1 is stimulating the direct though the stimulus is absent and no there is no inhibition what it will cause what it will lead to inhibit thalamic firing so what happens when thalamic firing is inhibited yes that's right difficulty in initiating movement initiating movement which we call akinesia or bradykinesia it is the symptom of parkinson's simple right so there is also a simple complaint another complaint in parkinson's which is tremor this is due to it is hypothesized due to the presence or preservation of few dopaminergic neurons which will cause intermittent stimulation and there is something called oscillatory pathway cerebello thalamo cerebral uh, cerebral pathway which will which is a central oscillatory pathway which is very complex and it's not our topic of discussion but i'm just telling you but uh, that uh, because you should not be left in a doubt then why tremors occur so they occur due to preservation of few dopaminergic neurons and now coming to the hunting tons what is happening here so this cag repeats inactivate the indirect pathway that means the direct pathway is normal what is happening here in direct pathway is normal and decreased indirect there is no inhibition right that will cause uncontrolled or disinhibited involuntary thalamic firing which in turn leads to movements what type of movements dancing like movements query form movements and this is the rationale behind treating both these conditions with their respective drugs isn't it isn't it so simple right okay i hope you understood and enjoyed the class to the fullest thank you very much if you did not understand please watch it again thank you